Our client has themed their kitchen based on Star Wars from top to bottom. In order to make a counter to match their wants, we designed a galaxy-based pattern that is a combination of two different stone patterns merged together with a vein running down the middle that feels a little like the Milky Way. Watch how we make a counter for a Star Wars-themed kitchen with a dramatic rock face edge. That's all coming up, so keep watching. Before they had our product, they had old, worn-out, water-stained laminate, and it didn't go with the Star Wars theme found on the walls, curtains, the fridge, and even near the floor. So, let's go back to my workshop and start building a new counter. So, we've already seamed up these two pieces here together since this particular countertop was very large, so we needed to make sure that these were seamed together. What we did was we pressed them together where we wanted them to be, and we just made sure to get these lines where we want to put these little dowels inside of them. And we went over with a quick head hoop, quick square and we marked across the middle we just drilled into each of the middle of these holes across there and just stuck the dowels in glued there and sometimes because of that they end up a little misaligned so what we did is we just on the ones where it didn't fully fit in we just went and spaced out the hole a little bit more and then with that done we glued it all up lined it up and smushed it together and then we just used this nice dead mallet here and just sort of off the side, a few good thwacks until it nicely stuck together. It's dried by now, so now we just have our template here that we've been taping down. And when you tape this down, you might want to start on one side and then sort of glue, sort of tape it down a bit more on the other side just to make sure I'm going in sort of one pass instead of just taping it a bit mismatched everywhere to make sure that it lays completely flat. Um, as well as before you tape it down, make sure that each side you have enough room for all the edges you're wanting to do. And then if you want, you can put too. So now that we've laid out our template, we are going to get this edge that we ripped on our table saw. It's just about an inch long. We also added some other parts to the edges around here as necessary. Right here, we just need this inch extra, so I'm just going to lay this out up against the pattern right here. Make sure it's nice and straight there. And then we just make sure the edge is right to our template here. And we're just going to go and get that edge there. And now that we have an edge here and here, we're going to make sure because the client wanted us to do a round over to edge since here and their gap to the kitchen counter was a bit tight. So we're going to get this pot to make sure we get a nice, even rounded edge. We're just going to line it up with the two lines that we have here and we're going to draw a line there. Let's make a jig for my saw. This is easy to make and comes out better than the commercial ones. I ripped a piece of MDF to one and a half inches thick and I'm using a speed square to mark spots to drill holes. I flip it upside down and ran a bead of glue down the middle to glue this onto a wider piece of MDF. I use another piece to get it roughly in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. Now I'm drilling holes where I marked and will screw the board down. That keeps it in place while the glue dries. I run the circular saw and it cuts the template perfectly to the right edge. So what we have here is this rip fence that we have made to go with our skill saw. And you may ask, you may wonder, well, what's the benefits of making one of these at home? Is it worth all the extra effort versus just buy? This is a rip fence for skill saw that we actually bought a long time ago. So there's a second part that you can clip on to make it longer. However, this is what you're supposed to be placing down. Now, when you place it down on the skinny side, it, it's liable to wobbling. It's very easy for it to wobble and go completely crooked, so it's not actually getting you that much support for a straight edge. And not only that, but you're supposed to anchor it down to a board like this with clamps like this. Now, 
when you clamp down a board like this onto a board and you're just you're just able to do it here or like at the end over there because you can't put it down anywhere in the middle because it will be blocking off the saw. So you only have these two rickety place points that hold it down there. And when you're pressing up against there with a the saw that's already tilting a lot, it's going to shift on you and it won't be a straight line in there. So this is a mess. Definitely worth making one of these at home. You may ask, well, how much work and time does it take? Well, so long as you have a skill saw like that and a table saw that is actually good quality that you can use, it only takes about 15 to 20 minutes to make one of these, and that's going at a leisurely pace, so it doesn't take that long. Just get one of these, make one of these for yourself, and it'll turn out great. I screw down the jig and cut out the corner edges. I actually made two jigs, one for shorter edges and a longer one. Here I am screwing down the longer jig to cut my next edge. If you don't want to use screws, you could also do this with a nail gun. Just shoot a few 18 gauge nails down and you're good to go. A nice thing about the jig, it is now cut exactly to the cut line, so I can drop the guide right along the lines I drew and make my cut. No extra measurements needed. This will be an undermount sink. I took the measurements from the template that came with the customer sink and I'm now adding that to my template. I know the location of their original sink since I marked that on my template and I'm now adjusting so the hole will perfectly match the new one. I used the circular saw to cut out the hole and a jigsaw to finish cutting the corners. So now I'm using a speed square to mark a section on the drop edge. I will cut this around the sink. This just gives me a lot more wiggle room. That way on the day of install, you have more than enough space to mount the new sink and you won't have to make on-site adjustments during your installation. I glue that edge to the underside of the counter and keep adding pieces all along the sides. Before I flipped the counter upside down, I marked which sides need the drop edge. For the rounded corner, I am gluing an extra piece down. Later, I will run a flush cut router bit to smooth everything out. Here you can see me marking another edge, then cutting it to length on the miter saw. I glue that down and everything is looking good. This last one worked out perfectly. The cut leftover piece I was able to flip around and it fit perfectly, no further trimming needed. Now I'm just running the router with a flush cutting bit. That follows the curve onto the drop edge. Here's the end result. I use a 3 8 round over bit and run it along the entire edge. I'm going to leave the back edge alone since that will become a rock face edge. Now we get to the fun part. Let's make a rock face edge. I like to start with the jigsaw and make a few cuts in strategic places. I make a few cuts along the diagonal, on the sides, and a couple of undercuts on the bottom edge. This helps to give the look of a chiseled stone edge where a few chinks came off while chiseling. Then I move on to the angle grinder. With the grinder, I will start shaping the edge. I carve into the edge to mimic the natural stone. I'll go back and add sharper details. I recommend getting a good quality grinding wheel. Here I'm using a new wheel made by Diablo that does a great job at quickly carving in the details. Check the edge. If it ever appears to be leaving burn marks rather than cut edges, it's probably time to get a replacement wheel. Be safe while you do this. I recommend using ear and eye protection and a respirator mask since this one does cause dust to fly. Next, I will add Bondo to the edge to give a further textured look. I smear it on, then tap with my gloved fingers to pull up high points and add texture. I will come back later and lightly sand this so that I am left with a textured edge, but it doesn't hurt to hand run your hand along it. And as you can see here, this is the end result! If you want more steps in this process, I made a separate video on just making rock face edges. We even cut open a real stone to compare the texture, then went back to our shop and recreated the same effect. I will post a link to the rock face edge video in the comments below. I am now running my roundover bit along the top edge of the counter. 
I will also do this to the L-shaped counterpiece. To make the backsplashes, I am running 3 quarter inch MDF through the table saw. I ripped this to just a little wider than the, what the finished product will be. I am now painting the underside of all the counters with Redguard, a waterproofing pr protective barrier. Redguard goes on bright pink and dries to a strong red. I added two layers of Redguard. I then paint the top side of the counters with bare paint and primer in one in the color Broadway. I like to texture layers of color on the rock face edge. I'm using a crumpled plastic bags and spray paint to bag textures of color on there. I am starting with hammered pewter, then I'll move on to a couple of brown tones. Now for the epoxy coat. I mix part A and B together in an even one-to-one -one ratio with enough for three ounces per square foot. I also mixed in black and silver glitter to create a star pattern throughout. I am pouring that mixture out onto the counter and will use a 1 8 inch not square notch trowel to further mix the epoxy and then spread it evenly over the board. I use a 2 inch brush to chop out the epoxy. This hides the trowel lines and gives one final level of mixing the epoxy. I like to chop in a random pattern. Now I'm using a torch and torching out any bubbles caused from the mixing the epoxy. This video has been sped up, but I am actually using slow sweeping motions. Here's a close-up so you can see some of the bubbles popping as you hit it with the torch. On to the effects. I am mixing the board with brown metallic and copper metallic mixed with 91% isopropyl alcohol. And on the other half of the board, I mixed a small amount of epoxy along with bright silver metallic and I'm chopping this into the counter. I will go back over this with a paint stick that I used to spread a texture on it. Here you can see the effect that it is creating. For the vein, I lightly fog a line with white Rust-Oleum spray paint. I use a paint stick to spread the vein out. I will hit this with a heat gun and the vein really starts to open up. I drizzle some epoxy mixed with white base tint across the middle of the vein. This will spread the vein out and open it up. I also drag some black spray paint with a stick across the white epoxy. Lastly, I drag two thin lines of cobalt blue spray paint with a stick on the outer edges of the vein. I hit the vein again with a heat gun. This really moves the colors around and makes an interesting effect. Then I add black marble spray effect over the entire board. This gives a random crackle effect. For the larger counter, I ran a piece of blue painter's tape down the middle. This marked where I will be running the vein to keep track of this as I work on two different halves of the stone effect. Finally, I move on to the backsplashes. I measured where the veins hit on the counters and place the vein in the same area on the backsplash. Even though the backsplashes are intentionally a little longer and will be trimmed down, the vein should now line up after trimming to the right spot. I also took note of which areas should get which of the two different stone effects, depending on where the backsplash will be. Once everything is dry, I will come back and apply a clear coat of epoxy over everything. Here we are on installation day. This is one of the counter pieces we will be installing. We set it down here against a wall for a moment while we brought in other pieces. 
the day of installment. We're here in the kitchen and we're about to install these great counters. They match very, very nicely with all of these cabinets that they that the client has up here. And we'll be installing these very cool countertops. We lay down plastic drop sheets everywhere to protect the floors, then move the L-shaped counter back off. It fit perfectly, so we are applying a silicone adhesive down. Then we put the counter back onto the cabinets. We bring over the backsplashes. We'll mark these, then trim them to the exact length. Here I am applying painter's tape while the others dry fit the large counter piece of the kitchen. We then flip the counter upside down and mount the sink to the counter. Then we add silicone adhesive to the cabinets and put the counter with the sink back down. We trim and install the final pieces of backsplash. Remember what we started with? There was old, ugly, and water-stained laminate with visible seams. Now they have a beautiful epoxy counter that has been custom-made to match their Star Wars decor theme. Look at how the veins of the backsplash line up with the rest of the counter. We asked the homeowner what they thought of their new counters. Let's hear what they have to say. So, um, not very long ago, we decided we needed to have our kitchen done. Our sink was leaking, and my husband goes, let's get a new faucet. And I said, I can't get a new faucet without a new sink. And we had an overmount sink, and I said, uh, I want an undermount sink. So we decided to do counters. We just have a bar up here, and we wanted a flat, lots of room. Um, we hadn't decided on what kind of stone we wanted, and we hadn't decided who we wanted to go through. And then we saw that Nalani had started her own business to make whatever kind of stone we wanted. So we actually went over to her house and she had great ideas for us and we custom made this stone where it looks kind of like a galaxy in our kitchen. Um, some things that we specifically wanted was a rounded curve right here because this isn't as much space. And then we also um, put this rock edge over here, I guess, all along the edge. Um, the counter used to hit at the wall. We put it out about five inches further so it gives us a huge amount more counter space. And then we also upgraded and um, put in taller backsplashes on both sides. So, anyways, it turned out amazing. They matched this silver on both sides, so it's like this stone was the same, and then the blacks on the outer sides. They brought this out a little bit more, so my stove is even. We should have done a video before. You could have saw the before. The for before was white yucky lam laminate. <laughs> anyways, it's great.